Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. I've got um, breaking news at the moment. You have a um, Russian warship Admiral Makarov which is apparently on fire after being hit by Ukrainian missiles and this has just happened very very recently within the next uh, within the last 30 minutes or so and it's very very concerning actually um, it's especially concerning since um, this article came out a few days ago saying US shared intelligence that helped Ukraine sink the Moscow warship so it seems like it's happening again um, it seems like either US is sharing intelligence or doing something to help these ships sink um, whether they have their own missiles or Ukrainian missiles I don't know but it seems like America or the West is doing a lot to sink these Russian ships because I do, I do not think Ukrainians have the technology or the logistics or intelligence to sink these Russian ships because if you think about it you gotta have these missiles um, basically on the shore so they'll be on the shore near somewhere maybe Odessa or something and then you you need to know where exactly these Russian ships are and you know that takes a lot of time a lot of intelligence and if these missiles are in Odessa shore Russia would be able to easily take them out with their air power with either with missiles or with um, with strikes using um, airplanes for example so these things cannot be done you know in this situation because um, Ukraine does not control the skies around the Ukraine is Russia with and Russia is monitoring with satellites you know they can see any any of these missiles that are placed near the shore near Odessa or any other shores around the Ukraine area that's still controlled by Ukraine so I don't think it's that easy so you know there's a lot of uh, speculation going on that you know it might not even be Ukrainian missiles it might even be British missiles or American missiles and they might be coming either from a submarine for example or maybe some other method I think this is a really really escalation of this war so if you think about it one of the reasons why you know NATO was against having um, basically no fly zones because they did not want to be seen shooting down russian airplanes because if, if that happens then that would escalate the war however they might not be shooting down russian airplanes but they're sef definitely shooting down russian warships um and i think this is a really really an escalation of this war because i do not think ukrainians are capable of sh shooting down Russian warships by themselves. I think Americans or NATO or the British are probably doing it themselves and uh, giving the Russian I'm uh, giving the Ukrainians the credit. So, you know, this is a real escalation of this war and I just want to see how this develops. And I believe if Russia can find evidence that, you know, US or Britain or NATO was involved more than what's necessary I think Russia will take steps and um, and this war will will escalate and it seems like it's escalating every day to be honest so I want to also want to kind of talk about this um, article as well it seems like Azov battalions are using civilians as bargaining chips uh, in exchange for food or water and you know a lot of uh, Western papers don't seem to uh, report this much you know they, they're reporting these Azovs as heroes etc it's absolutely ridiculous and but behind the scenes these guys are acting like terrorists and you can see here the Kremlin said Azov battalions are neo-nazis which use civilians they keep them trapped as hostages making them no better than Syrian terrorists civilians who were not released were used to exchange medicine or food as the Nazis saw fit last Thursday as you can see, Russia is, you can see Russia is doing everything they can to avoid civilian deaths. They are making, uh, putting civilian corridors. They are not storming the Azov um, steelworks. So they're doing everything they can to avoid civilian deaths. But these Azovs, who have probably 
taking in some of their own families, their own wives and children, and just using them as human shields. And I, I find it really, really sickening. I can see it from a mile away that how these civilians are used as human shields, but why don't the Western papers see this? I mean, they see these Azovs as victims, and they're seeing them as um, heroes, and they're saying, oh, these guys are so brave, they're standing against the Russians, they're not surrendering. And, you know, the Russians are killing civilians. You know, I can see it a mile away that these guys are being acting like terrorists, using civilians as shields, using their own families as shields as well. I think it's really, really sick. You know, if you use your a civilian, it's fine. But you're using your own wife and kids as, as shields just to save yourself. I think that's even worse. So let's look at the latest what's happening on the 6th of May, shall we? So you've got the Captain um, Palomar, a deputy commander of Ukraine's Azov regiment. So they have their own Azov regiment, by the way. And there's a video of him, apparently, got, he got shot. Um, you have nearly 500 civilians which have been evacuated from Mariupol. Um, Russia says that it's claimed its artic artillery struck multiple Ukrainian positions and stronghold overnight, killing 600 fighters. So I saw this article as well, which weapons the UK and other countries are sending to Ukraine. So I just find this um, quite laughable, to be honest. I mean, um, I will, I'm going to quickly go through this um, very, very quickly. And this is some of the weapons the UK and the rest of Europe have been, have been sending to Ukraine. And you can see here 5,000 anti-tank missiles. Uh, 1,360 anti-structure munitions, 5 air defense systems, 4.5 tons of explosive. So from what I can see from the war and what I can see from um, eyewitnesses on the floor and reports from uh, soldiers from both sides, a lot of these anti-tank missiles are very, very old. They're not going to give you all of the latest um, and the greatest equipment. You know, they're basically shipping missiles that's very very old very very out of date some of these missiles don't even work and some of these missiles are very very low in terms of impact and there's stories about how russians tanks were taking in five six seven of these hits and not blowing up and you know they're just using ukraine as a dump for old weapons and old missiles and all of these countries are doing that germany sending really old um, howitzers and really old equipment britain is doing the same america is doing the same you know every country that has really old equipment that's basically gathering dust in a warehouse somewhere they're just shipping it all to ukraine most of it's not even working and I'll tell you what this is doing. It's basically putting Ukrainian lives at risk. So you have all of these people who are, on the fr who are in the front line trying to use these weapons. And when you have a Ukrainian soldier trying to get close to a tank and then suddenly finds out the missile that he got is doesn't work or is malfunctioning or is not working as it's supposed to be working or he doesn't even have training to know how to work it properly. And he's right in the front line and he's, you know in vision of all of these um, Russian soldiers he's gonna be killed you know everyone's gonna be laying their you know munitions at him whether it's missiles or fire and that guy will be blown up into smithereens and he just puts uh, Ukrainian lives at risk and that's why you have so many soldiers dying every single day and you have so many reports about you know, five, six hundred Ukrainians are dying per day. I mean, these are, I'm looking at these reports in, uh, you know, in Russian uh, Ministry of Defense websites. And even in Telegram, you see so many Ukrainian soldiers just on the floor, dead. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. So you, right now, the Russians are in very much in control of the war. You have, you have a huge number of of uh, Ukrainian soldiers dying and I see the reports every day I see the reports in the Russian Ministry of Defense and I've seen some reports in the Western papers as well even they're acknowledging that there's 500 600 Ukrainians dying even up to a thousand per day dying uh, Russia is absolutely destroying them in Donbass uh, they're throwing missiles uh, they're throwing um, 
bombing uh, from the air. Um, they are trapping them. Uh, so many are surrendering as well. And so many are injured as well. And when you're injured, you're basically out. You can't fight anymore. So there's so many dying or dead or injured or surrendering per day. You're talking about 500 to 1,000 per day. You cannot survive a war with those odds. They are destroying not only the country, but destroying the people of Ukraine. I mean, if all of the men are injured or dead, how are you going to run a country with women and kids? I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Then you have all of these refugees leaving Ukraine. There won't be anything left of Ukraine in, in a few months if this continues. And all the US is doing and all of the West is doing, just, just sending them weapons. They think that's the answer to everything. And you can see from Pelosky, you can see from Lloyd Austin, they're using um, Ukraine as a base for their proxy war against Russia. And you can see the way that Pelosky is saying, oh, you know, this is basically, we want to weaken Russia. Even Austin is saying, we want to weaken Russia. Russia is not going to be weakened from this. Trust me, Russia is not going to be weakened. You know, they're forgetting a number of things. First of all, Ukraine, you know, is basically next to Russia. So Russia will be taking over that land and they will be strengthened by it. This is not Afghanistan where it's hundreds and thousands of miles away and, you know, it's not landlocked with, with Russia. You know, this is different. This, this is Ukraine and Ukraine is right next to Russia's border, which means Russia will, can easily uh, absorb Ukraine. And this is not going to weaken Russia. And history has shown that if a country wins a war and wins it in a very, very convincing manner, that country becomes more powerful. And Russia will become more powerful because, first of all, you know, a win over Ukraine will install so much belief in the people. And, and you can see how Ruble is doing as well. It will strengthen the people's resolve, uh, strengthen its manufacturing, strength, strengthen its weapon sales, weapons production, weapon manufacturing. The whole country is in war mode at the moment. So they are churning out missiles and, and tanks and munitions like like crazy. And plus, they're making so much money as well. you got, you got Europeans still buying Russian energy. So they've got a lot of money to burn. And with that money, they're going to be upgrading their military. Um, they'll be upgrading uh, military hardware and building more missiles. And you know, Russia will be much, much stronger after this. Much stronger. The only country that's going to be destroyed is Ukraine. And the Western countries are too stupid to see that. Ukraine is being destroyed. So, you know, the infrastructure is gone. The people are gone. The people are dying. You know, there'll be nothing left in Ukraine. And Russia will, will be able to basically take half of it. They'll, be, they'll take probably the west and the south of Ukraine and they'll be part of Russia. So Russia will be more powerful. Russia is not going to be weakened by this. And those, and those who think that Russia will be weakened by this war really do not know much about Russia or geop geopolitics or history. And history shows some of these countries who have come freshly out of a war usually become very, very powerful. You're talking about the Soviet Union after the Second World War. Uh, you're talking about the rise of America after the Civil War. You know, countries that come fresh out of a war, it really puts a lot of emphasis on, on the people. They have a lot of confidence. They work hard. They, they build a military, so they make sure they resupply all of the military that's been lost and you know it really gives a lot of confidence to a country to come out of a war as a winner and that only makes the country stronger so these people who says that russia is going to be weaker you know they they don't know what they're talking about they think this is going to be another afghanistan when russia was in afghanistan for 20 years and it was one of the main reasons soviet collapse however afghanistan is not ukraine and the main difference is Ukraine is, you know, next to Russia and Ukraine has got so many um, benefits in terms of oil around the Black Sea and gas. And also it's got fertile land which Russia will take and, you know, so many other great benefits that Ukraine would give to Russia in terms of helping its economy. And Russia will make that money back easily, easily make that money back. If it takes west of Ukraine and south of Ukraine, 
the amount of money they will make from the oil from the uh, from uh, natural gas from the black sea that's near the coast of odessa and also from the wheat and grain sales from the west of ukraine because some some of that land is some of the f most fertile land in the world and russia will make money back on that easily so russia is not going to get weaker russia is actually going to get stronger so let's carry on shall we uh, the uk has also sent non-lethal equipment we're talking about 90,000 russian packs um, over 10 pallets of medical equipment more than 3,000 pieces of body armor near nearly 77,000 helmets 3,000 pairs of boots you know this is not gonna last a day let alone a week you know what you're talking about you know hundreds and thousands of ukrainian soldiers and this is really a, a drop in the pool in terms of what uk is giving to ukraine it's really not going to make any difference so you got this um air surface to air missile supplied by the uk but if, if you look at uh, how the war is going in the beginning of the war when russia was all over the place i mean you've got to admit that there's russian forces in the northern ukraine they're coming from belarus they're coming from russia um then you have troops in the in the south uh, coming from crimea then you have troops in donbass so russia was all over the place and he was suffering some losses because um russia could not um secure these areas that they were taking so basically they went into plan b um they moved all of their troops to concentrate on the donbass area to concentrate on mariupol and now there's no losses in terms of russian airplanes helicopters planes they 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 know losses because they they can pretty much secure they're much more secure now they are focusing one uh, area at a time which is the correct way to be there's no really a timetable to go on russia needs to control this war and that's what they're doing they're focusing on donbass they're focusing on mariupol and they are setting up their uh, defenses so these uh, anti-aircraft missiles are going to be pretty much useless now and you can see from the news last couple of weeks there's been no downed aircraft no downed helicopter of, of russia so they are pretty much securing um, uh, ukraine and they're going to be taking things slowly so anybody with these weapons you know you're going to you're going to move these weapons all the way from um, the east of ukraine all the way to the battlefield in the west so You've got to either take them in trucks which are being destroyed um, on the way uh, you've got to take them through trains uh, and these train stations are being destroyed as well uh, or you can you're going to have to find a way to get them through to the east through other means and methods as well maybe using civilian cars or something but i'm pretty sure these cars have been taken out by russia as well then you have these stories about UK donating fleet of armoured vehicles to Ukraine. I'll tell you something, if there's any armoured vehicles in Ukraine driving around Ukrainian streets, they would be taken out by Russian planes or missiles immediately, immediately. And there's a lot of other things that people don't realise. Ukraine doesn't have any oil. All the oil depots around Ukraine have been destroyed. So Ukraine is starving for oil at the moment. So who's going to fill up these trucks, take him around the Ukrainian roads. And these Ukrainian roads, these cars are going to stick out like a sore thumb. Because there's no oil, not many people are driving cars on the streets. So when there's a moving vehicle driving along Ukrainian streets, it will stick out. You know, the Russian um, satellite images will pick out any cars or moving vehicles moving from west to east. And they will take them out easily, easily. You know, there's a lot of things that people don't understand. They think it's easy just to send weapons to Ukraine. And Ukraine is not a small country. It's a huge country. You know, and when you have no oil, people are... When people drive from one part of the country to uh, from the west to the east, you know the, the Russian military will immediately target that vehicle. And you know it's, it's a supply vehicle. And you'll just take it out easily. So you got um, another 100 million package of Mr. Johnson um, pronounced early on this month. Uh, 5,000 anti-tank missiles, high precision munitions. Again, you've got to move that to the battlefields. And again, I believe a lot of them will probably be destroyed on the way to the west of Ukraine. 
a lot of stuff is probably in um, bunkers or warehouses in Lviv. I believe Lviv is is the main uh, city where a lot of these um, weapons are going into. But every single day, Russia is destroying uh, warehouses in Lviv and and weapons munitions in Lviv and uh, and you know. It's not that easy to move weapons around Ukraine, especially when Russia is in control of the sky. And then you have um, the White House sending howitzers. And I've got to say, howitzers are probably the most useless, you know, military um, equipment you can give to Ukraine. Because howitzers are easy targets. I mean, as soon as you put a howitzer in place, you set it up. You start firing a few shots you're just a target and they can be easily taken out by you know missiles from russia or uh, helicopters or airplanes you know first of all you gotta move the howitzers set it up into the position and then you gotta put all of the ammunition in and start firing and the poor ukrainian soldiers who are using these equipments they just you know sitting ducks and Russia can easily take them out and I feel sorry for Ukrainian soldiers thinking all of these weapons are going to make a difference. All they are doing is murdering Ukrainians and just making them look like sitting ducks. And um, Zelensky and his cronies are sending these poor young you know, Ukrainian uh, kids out there saying go and go use this uh, how it's equipment. Most of them are probably not even trained to use it because you got, you know, NATO training uh, Ukrainian soldiers for you know all of these years and it takes a lot of time to train equipment it takes a lot of you know you're talking about years it takes to train uh, someone to use uh, equipment properly and so many Ukrainian soldiers are dead or dying who have been trained by NATO over the years and so what they're doing they're sending out these young Ukrainians with probably half an hour of training saying go use it and it's easy just put the um, munitions in and start firing and these poor ukrainians are just basically sitting ducks you know, being, being getting fired at by missiles and being killed and i feel sorry for all of these ukrainians who think they can still win this war they're just being pushed a false narrative you got boris johnson saying you guys are winning you got america saying you guys are winning uh, here's the weapons and Ukrainians are thinking just by getting all of these junk weapons from America and NATO and the UK they think they can easily win this war these weapons I'm sorry to say just junk it's just old junk they're not gonna win the war they in fact they are killing more Ukrainian soldiers this is like murder you're murdering your own kind because you're making them believe that they can win this war when they can't and just putting up and putting them up in the front line you know feeding them feeding them this false narrative that lot russia is losing ukrainians are winning and these ukrainians with false hope they're not even surrendering they're just going out there in battle getting themselves killed it's absolutely really really sad to see it's absolutely sickening to be honest very very sickening so this brings me up to the next story and you see um, Zelensky's ridiculous fleece that he wears, this one, this one, uh, this ugly one he's been wearing since the beginning of the war who hasn't really changed any of his clothes by the looks of it. He's probably stinking of cocaine and other drugs and who knows what else, probably sleeps in it, um, bathes in it, who knows. So his fleece has uh, obviously sold for £90,000 which is absolutely ridiculous. Who's going to buy this ridiculous thing that smells of drugs and sweat of Zelensky? I mean, this crazy, absolutely crazy. There's sick people out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if actually Boris Johnson bought it himself. And you can see Boris Johnson who led the auction. He actually led the auction. And he's saying a uh, Ukrainian president is one of the most incredible leaders of modern times. So you can imagine maybe Boris Johnson buying the fleece himself. And you can imagine him at night um, basically cuddling the fleece and smelling it while he goes to sleep. That, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I wouldn't be surprised. So you have another EU crony, uh, Charles Mikel. And he's admitted that all of the um, assets that the EU and the Americans have basically seized from Russia they're going to use it to rebuild Ukraine 
Um, so they got all of these assets from all of these oligarchs and all, don't forget the 300 billion or 600 billion they stole from the central bank of Russia as well and they'll probably use that to rebuild Ukraine. I'll tell you this right now, this is like daylight robbery, this is the worst heist ever orchestrated in the world in, a, in terms of the amount of money they've stolen from Russia. And I'll tell you what right now, there'll come a time when Russia will completely cut off the gas and cut off the oil and the Europeans will really, really suffer. And that's when the, uh, Russia will say, you know what, give us the money back and we'll, um, we'll sell you our oil again and we'll sell you our gas. Because all of this gas and oil that Russia's been selling, this, this is legit money. You know, this is uh, Russia's hard-earned money. Uh, this was done legitly. And all the Europeans are doing and they're just stealing that hard-earned cash. And I'm... I'm pretty sure, you know, when one of these days when Europe doesn't have any gas, doesn't have any oil, especially with the economic issues at the moment, and a lot of these countries have already moved into recession, they're going to start begging Russia for the gas and oil. They'll, they'll be like, oh, we're really, really sorry for putting all these sanctions on you. Uh, and Russia will basically say, you know what, if you want this gas and oil back, you're going to have to get rid of these sanctions and you're going to have to get give our money back. One good thing which has happened from this war is Russian ruble has suddenly become an international currency uh, because they're forcing a lot of these European um, unfriendly countries to buy Russian gas in rubles. It has propped up the Russian rubles, made it into a very, very valuable international currency. And that's the only good thing that's happening uh, to Russia right now. And that's just going to help Russia in the long term and help its economy, help its currency in the long term. Anyway, guys, that's all I have time for today. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to um, send me your comments. I love reading your comments. Uh, and also, if you can, help by like, sharing, subscribing as well. I really appreciate it. Or if you really want to support me, uh, you can join me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.